Hi everyone, Whitney Lowe here and welcome to today's Clinical Insights video where we're going to be talking about leg length discrepancies. This is actually a pretty common thing in our population and a lot of questions come up about whether or not I can do anything about it or does it even matter. So we're going to dive into some of those things looking first off at how we may define a leg length discrepancy because there's a couple of different types and then we'll look at the role that soft tissue treatments might play in addressing these problems. There's a great deal of variability in the research about how prevalent a leg length discrepancy is in the general population. Some statistics advocate for being up to about 30% of the population might have a leg length discrepancy of about a centimeter or more. Some other studies say that the, you know, from one to two centimeters, it's a much smaller group of people. I ran across one study that said close to 90% of the population had a, a leg length discrepancy of at least a centimeter, meaning a centimeter or less. That sort of tells us that this is a pretty common thing in the population for people to have some degree of leg length discrepancy. The thing that we want to identify and determine is how important is it and when does it really matter. So to do that first let's look at two different types of leg length discrepancies. So the first type of length discrepancy we're going to talk about is called a structural leg length discrepancy and this indicates something in the structure of the bones in the lower extremity is indicating a difference in length. So for example, if I were to put a marker here at the femur here and down at the very distal end of it and then take this measurement here, that would be different than taking the exact same measurement on the bone here and also down here and drawing a line between those two. And if we actually measured the distance of the length of the bone itself, it would be different. And so clearly, if there is some degree of length discrepancy there, that has implications for lower extremity biomechanics. So for example, if this leg is longer, it's going to then push this pelvis higher on this side when a person is standing with equal weight on both feet. So this pelvis is going to tilt up a little bit higher on this side because of the length difference. And because the pelvis will tilt over to the left, we refer to this as a left lateral pelvic tilt happening because of a structurally long right leg. Now, why might you have one leg structurally longer than the other? It might be something that's just in your genetics that has led to that length difference of the bones. A lot of times there is a, an in injury from your early childhood or some other time or a surgical procedure or something like that that has caused some degree of shortening of one of the bones. So one of them could be shortened as a result of some other type of trauma. But when we're talking about a difference in bone length between sides, we're still talking about a structural leg length discrepancy. Now the next type is referred to as a functional length discrepancy. And this means there's not really a difference in the length of the bones, but something has caused a postural alignment challenge where it is appearing as if one leg is shorter than the other. One of the most common ways this is evaluated in the clinical practice is putting a person supine on the treatment table, holding their feet up and pulling and giving a little bit of traction to their feet and looking at the level of the ankle or the medial malleolus on each side and seeing if it is level. If it is not, then there's an indication of a length discrepancy. But that length discrepancy might not be about the bones being longer on that leg. It might be because one of the muscles is playing a part in that. Here we see the quadratus lumborum muscle right here. And this muscle is the one that's the primary implicator for a functional leg length discrepancy. So what happens if this quadratus on this side is really tight, it's going to pull up on this pelvis on this side. And as that pelvis tilts up, it will appear in certain types of postural evaluations like the one we mentioned a moment ago with a person supine on the treatment table or sometimes even in a standing position it will appear as if this right leg is shorter because the pelvis is being pulled higher on this side so an unequal balance of pull from muscles on the pelvis can produce that functional leg length discrepancy a key factor to note here is that either the structural or functional length discrepancy can eventually lead to some degree of functional scoliosis because if this right pelvis again tilts toward the left hand side like we saw earlier if it's tilting in that direction it's going to mean the lumbar vertebra in no longer is no longer going to be straight up and down but it is going to be bent out to this side like that so this degree of functional scoliosis may be the result of either the structural or functional length discrepancy 
Now, one of the questions that comes up frequently around leg length discrepancy is, how relevant is this to causing musculoskeletal pain problems? And the research is actually a little complicated on this. It's, there's, there's not really a, a good consensus around the relationship between the two. A number of studies have found there is some degree of correlation between leg length discrepancy and, for example, low back pain, but there are numerous other musculoskeletal pain problems that may ca be caused by a length discrepancy. There could be joint disorders, uh, arthritis. Uh, there's uh, been another study that would, talked about the relationship between the length discrepancy and iliotibial band syndrome. So we do have a number of problems that might be related to a length discrepancy, but it's not immediately clear if there's a direct cause-effect relationship. It may be just one of a number of factors present in those conditions. So how could this be evaluated to determine if this is a structural or functional difference? There's a couple of different ways that are used to evaluate the length discrepancy. One is with a full length x-ray of the lower extremity. This is the most accurate way to determine if there is actually a structural leg length problem. The challenge is it's an expensive procedure to go through and you do end up exposing the individual to a pretty significant dose of radiation for that full body a double lower extremity x-ray. So it's not used very often and a lot of times we default to a couple other strategies. One of the more common methods for evaluating a length discrepancy is with a tape measure. And what you do is you take a tape measure and try to make sure you measure the same spot as closely as possible on each side and at the same point in the tape. And you make a measurement here from the ASIS down this way across the lower extremity down to the medial malleolus on this side. So you cross over the knee and you go to the inside of the ankle here because the tibia is the weight-bearing bone that we're indicated that we're most interested in in terms of how that relationship might affect biomechanics. So we go from the ASIS on this side over to the medial malleolus down on this side. And then we'll make a, a measurement on the other side and see if it is the same or different or what degree of difference there is. Now, ideally, this tape measure method should tell us if there's a significant structural length difference because even if the pelvis was tilted up to one side from a functional tightness in the quadratus lumborum muscle up here, for example, we'd still have the same length difference from the ASIS down to the medial malleolus. So this is a helpful method to determine some difference between structural and functional length differences. There may be also some other types of physical examination methods like various postural evaluations or certain types of special orthopedic tests like the supine to sit test, which will a lot of times have a person just sit up in a position where they are lifting their torso up off of a treatment table. And if the quadratus lumborum is tight, let's say, for example, on this right side here, if that quadratus lumborum is tight, it might pull the hip and pelvis up in a supine position as the person lifts their torso off the table. So that would pull this lower extremity on the right side into a position that might appear as if it was shorter. So that's kind of a functional evaluation method. Not always super accurate, but it is one of the methods that is used. Now, what most people want to know is what can we do about this? For example, how can we go about treating it? There's a couple of different strategies that might be used to address this. Frequently, people will be diagnosed with or, or prescribed a heel lift in their shoe that will be put under the short leg. So, for example, if this person has a short right leg, so the bones of the right side are shorter, than they are on the left, they will have a heel lift put underneath this right side in their shoe that will lift them up and make the pelvis equal. That's a common thing and it's pretty effective for doing some type of treatment with a structural length discrepancy. A potential problem, however, may occur if the practitioner who's evaluating this does not make the distinction between a structural or a functional leg length difference. And let's say, for example, they've got a tight quadratus up here, and we'll put some quadratus fibers up here on this side, and it's pulling the hip and pelvis upward in this direction, up here, and then that's going to make this right side appear shorter. And if you do not make that evaluation and determine that this is a functional difference and you prescribe someone to have a heel lift put under their shoe on this side, it's just going to exacerbate that problem and make it worse. So that's why it's important to make that distinction between a structural and functional length difference. 
Now, from a massage perspective, for that individual that does have a functional leg length difference, let's say, for example, this tight quadratus over here on this side, we can certainly do some work on that quadratus and try to reduce hypertonicity in that muscle, and that may go a long way towards restoring ideal biomechanical balance in the hip and pelvis region so that they can retrain those areas to not be hypertonic and address that length discrepancy. If there's an, an actual structural leg length difference, there's really nothing that massage can do for that, but it is helpful to make that determination if it is structural or functional so that we know what might be the limitations or potential benefits of our work. It's a prevalent problem in our population, so you're going to run into people who have a length difference. The big question to ask is, how relevant is this? Is this really important? A good example to think about is, if a person is doing predominantly a sedentary office work job on a regular basis and they identify as having a leg length discrepancy, that might not be such of a big deal. But if that same person decides to immediately start into a recreational running program, and they're running on, let's say, the side of the road, which is sloped, and it's really in the sloped in the wrong direction for their length discrepancy, that might immediately become quite a problem that they would need to address. So the important takeaway is sometimes it could be relevant, and other times it might not be as relevant, and that's why your skill as a practitioner in evaluating the whole big picture is so important. So that's a general overview on the leg link discrepancy issue. If you'd like to learn some more about orthopedic problems or various musculoskeletal pain and injury conditions and how we can address those with massage, hop on over to our site at academyofclinicalmassage.com. You can also pick up our handy assessment cheat sheet over there, and we'd love to have you explore some of those different options and see ways that we can help you to help other people get out of pain. We'll see you in the next video.